G'day, Vaughn here. Welcome to Cookies Fish Room. I hope everybody is doing well, wherever you're from. Um, today I will be covering the Wallstad jar that I have had a numerous amounts of um, requests to do. Um, there's not much to it to be honest and it's something that only takes a few minutes. I uh, will put up a picture of what it ends up looking like and what it currently looks like and what is actually been running for last month which all you guys have seen on Facebook and Instagram. So just before I keep going I'd like to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to our channel and to those who have left comments and likes thank you very much. Um, now so you're going to need a few things to, to do this. You're going to obviously need the plants you decide to put into this tank, uh, this jar. I will only be using a carpeting plant. I'm making this as simple as possible. I'm only keeping shrimp in this jar. So I will be using a single pot of dwarf hair grass, Japanese dwarf hair grass, just a single pot of it, and some glosso stigma grain in my backyard. I'll pop up a picture of how I've grown that and it's actually in the main tank that you would have seen um, at the start of the intro uh, of with my guppies, my red dragons and my discus. Also, any sort of um, decoration that you want in the tank. So personally, I like to use, and don't shoot me here for pronouncing this, Sarai, Sarayu, Sarayu rocks. Um, yes, make fun of me, I'm sure, but I can't speak. Um, so I've got three pieces I've actually selected down at my local fish shop and not very much to it just three simple pieces and just remember if you're depending on what you're putting in the t in the jar you may need to put more so some shrimp like a lot of um, rock piles and stuff like that um, I may be adding more later if I want them to breathe so and a simple piece of Malaysian um, Driftwood, I think spider wood this one. Just one single piece of that, play with that later. And underneath it, I'll just open this up. The good old fluvial stratum, my go-to for most things. Now, it's very high in, um, this one's very high in nutrients, and this is the reason why I'm putting this in, so some people won't, uh, basically can't afford or don't want to use dirt in their wall stad jars. Some people can use, and um, it is definitely doable to use dirt from your backyard. Just make sure there's no fertilizers have washed through it and nothing nasty like oils or um, fuels. And some people will even use sand. Now, if you're using sand, I highly recommend this stuff here. Get a bit closer. Just changes once every six months. You just have to re-add it into the dirt. It doesn't float. It doesn't cause problems like those capsule ones. And it's fairly cheap. Down here, down under, we pay, I think, uh, approximately 11 bucks a bag. And that bag should last you more than two or three years in a regular size 55 gallon tank. Now, I am putting shrimp in the tank, so I do use this stuff for the GH or equilibrium, just to make sure it, um, they get the right hardness in there. And that's about it really. So I'm gonna cut it here from now and I'll see you in a sec with the setup of this jar and how we do it. Thank you very much. Welcome back guys. Okay, so this is the actual officially how we're setting up the jar. So first thing we gotta do, let me just move this out of the way. The decorations. We are going to start with what substrate we are going to use. Now, this jar here for the Aussies is found in Kmart. It holds four liters of whatever you want to put in it, fluid, and it's the perfect size to do this. So you don't want to go too big. Um, you don't want to go too small, and you can't put something like a beater in here because it is way too small for it. So it is a perfect size for shrimp, snails, and something very simple. And personally, I like my shrimp. You can even have this by your bedside. It, it is dead quiet and um, as little maintenance as you can imagine goes into this. Uh, the last jar I made actually had zero water changes for over 18 months. 
So while I'm getting this established, I am doing a couple of water changes to go through the um, nitrogen cycle, the whole process, as you know. If you do want to skip all the, the cycle part of it, you can actually take substrate out of an existing tank. If you've got one going with dirt, you can take the dirt out of that, put it in here and test your water, of course, before you put shrimp in because shrimp and fish really are very sensitive to um, poisons such as ammonia and uh, nitrites and very high nitrates. So what I'm gonna be doing is testing the water, give it a couple of weeks, testing it, and if all is good, shrimp can go into it. So just remember to test the water before you do anything. Now, this fluvial stratum does promote lower pH, so just remember that, and most black substrates do that. Uh, in, get this in there now. And no, I'm not gonna wash this because I am lazy. And that's being straightforward. So this is how I like to have it. And it has something that yucky in there. All right. Now, the fun part is actually positioning where you would want your decorations and, well, rocks, you could say, to go. So, I've been playing around with this off camera during the week and kind of have a faint idea of how I want this to look. Sort of a, and not your guarmy sort of look, but I'll turn it around in two seconds and show everybody what I've done here. So I didn't want to spend too much time on camera practicing it. So I've actually done this without worrying about how I'm going to make it look on camera. Now, I just want a simple twig to come through here. So it is very important for, actually, you know what, I'll put the, the grass in first. It is very important for um, shrimp to have some sort of wooden um, or leafy, um, uh, Leafy, uh, what do you call it? Swift decoration. Yeah, sorry, I've got my mates here in the background. To a decoration of some sort, I just have a mental blank, to help, um, it's just how they um, eat, basically. So they'll chew on this all day, and it will actually help them in a big, big way. So the plants I'm using, two of them are from my backyard, two clumps, and this one here has been through, put through the quarantine method already, just to make life a bit easier, and so now, this is how you plant every single carpet that you have in a tank. And I've done this with all the carpets in all my tanks. I only started off with one single container and I literally break it up into heaps of tiny pieces that I can be bothered. So let's just do that quickly. I should have pre-prepared this, but I didn't. So I'll just do that now. The more the smaller they are, the more likely they are to spread. So people I have seen use carpeting plants the wrong way, they actually get a slab of it. And I am guilty myself of doing this in the past. Look, I know a lot about fish, but I'm just still studying and getting all the plant stuff right. So um, they just literally pin down their carpeting plants to the top of the soil and what happens there, the roots don't have the room and they don't get into the dirt like you would hope they would to spread. So if you put this into the dirt, the roots, they, what will happen there is they will, the roots will actually spread sideways and give you a chance to, give them a chance to grow sideways and give you a nice return and form a nice carpet. So I'll grab these got my tweezers. I've been asked a lot of questions about tweezers this week and scissors and all the rest. Now, do not go buy the cheapy ones. And the reason I say that is because they will rust and rust is something you don't want inside your tank. No matter what you do, avoid it at all costs. Spend an extra few bucks. It's way worth it and you won't be buying a new set every two weeks that way. And get yourself a nice pair of tweezers, like this one here, it is chunky, 
and doesn't want to let go of the damn plants. Oops, sorry, I don't know if I can say that. I think that's a curse word in, in America. It's pretty normal here in Australia. Get off me. It'll get in me. Okay, maybe it won't. Try not to curse. Just get rid of that piece and get another one. I'll make this as fast as I can. There we go. And sometimes it's actually better to use your fingers and not bother with what I'm doing now, but I'm just trying to make it look fancy on, on camera. I'm gonna get up and stick this in here. So this literally will only take about two to four weeks to form a full carpet at the bottom of this jar. I will put an, another after um, video up on how it's looking once it's done. And this is why you need sharp tweezers. Okay, let's just use fingers. Maybe not. If something doesn't want to stick, just get rid of it and move on. So we've got quite a few pieces here. And I think we've got, over, I've overdone it with the amount of pieces that I've got. I want to put some of the Glosso Stigma in here just for a different look. And the Glosso Stigma um, is pretty easy carpeting plan. Again, there's a misconception that it needs a lot of CO2 and a lot of light. Um, it doesn't need CO2 to spread. It spreads really well without it. I've got it in my other, my original jar, which I will show everybody later on. And it spread really easily in there. And, and Norm, setting up a jar like this would also be great for your daughter or son to get in and have a go. In a and, hobby? Yeah, as a hobby and test their brain to create something. Well, it's funny you said that because Mason, my youngest son, has actually asked me for one of these jars for the same reason that you've just said. And um, I'm going to see if he's responsible enough to look after it. So um, he just lost Pinchy, our um, our local yabby, to the house. We've had Pinchy for over five years. So Pinchy was kind of his pet more than my pet. and. He wants something else, so he wants to start with a tank, and this is a good way before getting in, him into tanks and the responsibility, because I know ultimately I'm gonna be the one looking after it. Um, I want him to be able to enjoy looking after these tanks. So again, using my fingers, pardon me. Everything goes better in with a finger. And last one. Now, it's only taken a few minutes if I didn't screw it up with the, with the tweezers. This would have gone in quicker. Um, literally it's taken, would take you normally about five minutes to get this put in. Once you've put these in, you can then decide if you want to put in any more uh, plants. So this is here, the Glossa Stigma I did get from the backyard, which I've grown in the tub. Uh, some will call it a tote. And all we do is break up little pieces again. So it spreads how much you want. I'm not gonna put too much in because we will be here for a while. So I don't want that to happen. I am putting it to start at the center of the jar because that's where it will get the most light and that's the other thing people always ask me what lights I'm using I actually went off to our local hardware store here in Australia called Bunnings and bought a, a, a really small indoor floodlight um, for plants that people use and that only cost me from memory $18 you can use LEDs if you like and LEDs aren't that expensive, and I'm talking about only small circular ones that cost about a pack of three remote controlled with sunrise sunset feature on it for less than $15 for the Aussies. Um, I'm sure the, our US and international uh, members have something of comparison that doesn't cost too much. So I've only put a few pieces in, as I'm sure you can see there. 
I'm leaving the front open with not much in it because it just looks nice and pretty that way. And I will take this twig and just have it sitting in the jar across the top but coming out of it just like that. So basically that's it. You can then fill it up. I will be filling this up with just a little bit of water because I am transporting this this Sunday. This will become a Mother's Day, uh, sort of a Mother's Day Prezi, or partly. Just making sure all the dirt doesn't fly back to the front. When I do this, I'm trying to pour it on the rock. Pouring it on the rock will stop the dirt from moving too much. If you don't have that sort of decoration, just stick in a small lid of some sort and pour it over a lid, bottle lid, whatever you like. So, well, those didn't go in very well. I'll fix that later. So you may need to do a couple of water changes initially to get rid of the ammonia, as I mentioned earlier. And if you didn't push those in properly like I didn't, it will just float back up. And just push that back in. There we go. This bit doesn't want to go in. It's in there. And I'll do some tidying up, some just general cleaning up later on. But that's the idea of it there. And it literally will take you if you're a bit better with the tweezers than I am, about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. So I just don't like the positioning of that. I'm taking it out and redo it again. We'll clean it up later. But yes, now the other thing I can suggest is you can put a piece of pothos in it, devil's ivy, have the roots hanging in there and have a longer and larger piece of wood coming out and you can have it growing around it. You can also have a, a full syngonium plant. I'm not sure if um, that's what it's called everywhere else in the world, but that's what we call it here in Australia. And that itself looks wonderful, especially if it's got access to the open air um, that can change color. Um, a peace lily is another thing you can do. It's just, just to have the roots dropping in it. There's a lot of options that you can put into one of these jars. So give it a go. I'd love to see what everybody comes up with. Um, it's, a, it's a cheap, um, not very expensive project to do. Can be used for as Mother's Day presents if your mum's into something like this or you, as my mate here suggested for the kids to get started into their, um, their hobby life. Um, yeah. Hit us up, show us what you've done, um, tag us on Instagram. I'll be very interested to see what everyone comes up with. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. And again, if you are going to put shrimp in, do put some equilibrium or just shrimp GH, aqua vitro, very cheap stuff. Just a drop of it in there. I've become accustomed to using this stuff now, so um, don't need to really measure it. And let me know what you've done and how you've gone. And I will show you the outcome of this jar once it's all settled a little bit more than it is at the moment. So we'll get the full water put into it and um, a decent white stuck on it so you guys can have a quick look. All right, take care of yourselves and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.